Welcome to the Quick Hitter version of Catch and Shoot 2.0. Along with Otto Strong, I'm Bruce Bernstein, filling in for Aaron Berlin. Our guest this week is Jared Greenberg of Turner Sports, who had some words about the retirement of Marv Albert, as well as the Hall of Fame induction of Mike Breen. We'd be remiss. I mean, because of who you are, what you do, where you grew up, the people you work with, the people you work for, we have to ask you a few questions about some of your colleagues and, and even friendly competitors. But I really want to start with Marv Albert. Yeah. Uh, he announced his retirement. You're a kid from the New York area, grew up listening to him, no doubt was a person you respected, idolized perhaps, and then you had a chance to work with him. Tell us your favorite personal Marv Albert story. Um, I, I think, I think my, there's, there's a couple, I'll, I'll start, I'll, I'll, I'll give you Take this your one. time. We got time yeah. for this one. Give, yeah. give it to us. <laughs> no, I mean, it really is. Um, every time we do what's called a, a game open, right? When uh, the big TNT music comes on, you see the shot from the blimp. Uh, Marv tells you what the temperature is outside, even though the game's being played inside. Um, you know, they give you the standings, kind of what's at stake for tonight, and then they come on camera and say hello. And every time he says my name, I and I'm thinking about it now, I'm getting chills now. I get chills every time that happens. Um, it's really a pinch me moment, Bruce. Like you said, you know, grew up in, in North Jersey, uh, watching Marv first, you know, on, on NBC and MSG, um, and then obviously, you know, on TNT for the last however many years. Remarkable. But the, the coolest thing that I tell everybody about doing national, nationally televised games in the NBA um, for TNT and, and ESPN gets the same access is that about an hour before the game, we get a, a mandatory 10 to 15 minute conversation off the record conversation with each head coach. And typically that conversation happens in the head coach's office. There's no cameras, there's no recorders. It's just the broadcasters and the coach, usually the PR person. And remember the first game I did with Marv, it was a, a Minnesota at Denver game. Um, and it was a couple of years ago, right when, um, when, when it was coming down to the wire last minute, last uh, couple of uh, games left in the season. And the two of them were battling for the eighth spot in the playoffs. And we sat down in Tom Thibodeau's office and I was getting ready to ask all these questions and I had stuff for Tibbs and all this stuff. And, and Marv just went, Marv takes over the meeting and ask goes player by player by player by player asking questions and to hear how he asked those questions and to then hear how he worked it into the broadcast i i thought it's just it's an art you know and it's 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 remarkable and and i you know it's been it's been awesome working with him there was one time he messed up my name in the game open <laughs> and after after like so the, that's the game open after the game, we're in, in a, a car service back to the hotel. And this is now like three and a half hours later. And he's like profusely apologizing to me for doing that. <laughs> yeah. Great, uh, so Mike Breen, uh, who's a recipient of the Kurt Gowdy Award. Yeah. Um, you, you, you guys also must have, must have had some, uh, some stories to, to talk about. Yeah. Um, Mike has meant a lot in my career. And... Um, Mike, uh, Mike, Mike, I'll say this, Mike, Mike and I nearly almost worked with one another at one point. And, um, he did a lot to try and help me and get me in position. And, um, and Mike and I keep in touch often. And, and Mike and I also have a, a, uh, a mentor in common by the name of Ed Ingalls, who recently passed away. Ed was Mike's mentor when he was coming up through Fordham um, and Ed was my mentor at Hofstra and, um, th he's really gotten the two of us together and, and Mike and I are really close and I, I, he's just like probably one of the classiest men I've ever met and just, he's just an awesome guy. Mike and I actually work together. Wait, you know, you, it's funny cause I know you went to Hofstra, you just mentioned it a moment ago. 
Mike and I worked together 30 years ago at Sports Channel America, mm -hmm. and our studios were on the campus of yep. Hofstra University yep. and uh, in beautiful Hempstead, Long Island, New York, in yep. the shadow of the uh, Long Island Coliseum or whatever they call Nass it. Nassau yeah. Coliseum, yeah. Nassau yeah. Coliseum. Yeah. Otto being a good Long Island boy, too. He's, uh, <laughs> he, he well knows that neighborhood. Yeah, tested Brini, daily on these things. <laughs> Brini was... We worked together just before he started doing the Don Imus show. Okay. And it was so funny because at the time I was nominally his boss and I'm using air quotes on that. So it's so funny. He always gave me credit that I did not deserve because he said, you know, I had to clear it with you because I was working for Sports Channel and I was under contract. I needed to get permission to do Imus' show. And you said, yes. And I'm thinking, well, what the hell was I going to say? Did you, do you see where we're working? Right. You know, he was, but he was, he's always been that kid from Yonkers, never forgot where he came from, yeah. humble, gracious, just a, a total class act. Yeah, and I'll tell you. You can't quick, say any more about the guy than that. Quickly, I'll just say this about the Imus show. Um, so I, growing up in North Jersey, I would go to sleep, I'd fall asleep every night with the Mets on the radio listening to Bob Murphy and Gary Cohen. And I'd really kind of subconsciously study play by play and how to do games. And then my alarm would go off every morning to um, WFAN because that's what the channel the Mets were on at the time. And I'd wake up every morning to get ready for school, middle school and high school to I miss back when he was still on WFAN and hearing Breen do those sports updates. That's obviously how I was first introduced to him. If you'd like to hear more from Jared, check out the full version of Catch and Shoot 2.0 from Pure Hoops Media. You can also see the video version of the Catch and Shoot Quick Hitter on the Pure Hoops Media YouTube channel.